that they were connected to a 6,000-year-old worldwide worship of Lucifer. Mr. Prize, the author we quoted a few minutes ago, was not the only one to believe that America has a hidden secret in its founding. So it all seems to fit. America was named after Lucifer. America has a secret destiny. America's secret destiny is the New World Order. America's role in the future is to bring the New World Order to the world. The New World Order is coming very soon. On January the 1st, the New World Order will begin the year 2000 AD and it will last for 1,000 years. I'd like to now change the subject just a little and discuss the connection of Freemasonry with the Mormon Church. This is Joseph Smith, the founder of the Mormon religion. He started the Mormon Church in 1830. Twelve years later, in 1842, Mr. Mr. Smith wrote, On March the 16th, 1842, I was with the Masonic Lodge and rose to the sublime degree. I believe that the sublime degree is the master mason degree, meaning that he became a third degree mason. After Joseph Smith joined the Masonic Lodge, masonry swept through the Mormon religion. There were five lodges inside the Mormon religion near their home city of Nauvoo, and the one at Montrose, Illinois was called Rising Sun Number 12. It appears that some of the Mormons understood. It is an interesting study as to why Joseph Smith joined the Mormons. In 1839, three years before he did join the Mormons, the Masons rather, I got back to the question is why did he join the Masons? So three years before he joined the Masons, he wrote a letter to his believers in which he said, we further caution our brethren against the organization of bands of companies or companies by oaths, penalties, and, or secrecies. So it sounds like he was speaking out against the Masons before he joined them. That is very strange, but any researcher knows that before he joined them, he spoke out against secret organizations. It is claimed by the Mormons that Joseph Smith wrote the Book of Mormon in 1830, 12 years before he joined the Masons. There are at least three warnings in the Book of Mormon, the basic Bible of the Mormon Church, against secret combinations. The first is in 3 Nephi 9.9. The great city of, and I'll pronounce this the best I can, Jacob Negath, have, have I caused to be burned with fire because of their secret murders and combinations? As I've shown you repeatedly, the Masons are a secret combination, and on occasion they have murdered people. Here Joseph Smith's Book of Mormon warns the Mormons against the Masons, but he still joined them. The second warning is in Ether, or Ether 818. Forgive me, Mormons, I don't know how to pronounce that. And it came to pass that they formed a secret combination which combination is most abominable and wicked above all in the sight of God. Yet Joseph Smith joined the Masons. And the third warning is in Ether 9.6. For so great had been the spreading of this wicked and secret society that it had corrupted the hearts of all the people. It sounds as if the Book of Mormon is specifically warning the Mormons about the Masonic Lodge. Yet three years later, Mr. Smith joined the Masons with their oaths penalties and secrecies. And then less than two months after he joined the Masons, on May the 8th, 1842, Joseph Smith introduced the Mormon Temple Endowment Ceremony. Let me explain a little about this endowment ceremony. There are two classes of Mormons in the church, the regular Mormon and the endowed Mormon. I have read where only about 20% of the Mormons are endowed Mormons. This means, of course, that 80% of the Mormons have never been through their so-called sacred ceremony. There are two classes of Masons in the Lodge, the regular Mason and the 33rd degree illuminated Mason. Endowed Mormons do not ask to go through the endowment ceremony. They must be recommended for the secret ceremony, so he or she cannot ask to be an endowed Mormon. The 32nd degree Mason is recommended for the 33rd degree initiation ceremony. He cannot go through 
the 33rd without being asked. So only certain Mormons can become endowed and only certain Masons can become illuminated 33rd degree Masons. Let me put these events in their proper sequence so that the viewer can understand which came first. The Mormon story really starts in 1826. This is a map of the area around Palmyra, Batavia, and Manchester, the location where all of these events unfolded. They're all, of course, near the city of Rochester, within 25 miles, and Rochester is in the eastern part of New York State. In 1825, there seems to be some difference as to when Hiram Smith, Joseph Smith's brother, joined the Masons in Palmyra, New York. But the consensus is that he joined in 1825. In 1826, Captain William Morgan published the entire Masonic ritual for at least the first eight degrees. Joseph Smith, the founder of the Mormon Church, lived about 50 miles from the place where this activity took place in New York City. In 1830, Joseph Smith founds the Mormon religion. In 1842, Joseph Smith joined the Masonic Lodge, as we've already seen. Later in 1842, Joseph Smith released the Temple Endowment Ceremony. It is important at this point to make certain that you understand that the Mormons claim that Joseph Smith received the endowment ceremony as a revelation from God. Joseph Smith claimed that the ceremony was given to him by the God of the Bible. You might wish to buy this book entitled Mormonism's Temple of Doom, written by Bill Schneblin, a writer I've discussed before. You might recall that Mr. Schneblin happens to be an ex-Mormon, an ex-Mason, and an ex-male witch. He shows the three ceremonies of these three organizations side by side, and you will see the similarities. All three use the same signs, symbols, and ceremonies. And in a chapter entitled The Temple and Ceremony and Masonry, inside this book entitled Mormonism, Shadow or Reality, written by two ex-Mormons, Gerald and Sandra Tanner, you can see the Mormon and Masonic ceremonies side by side. They list at least 27 specific similarities between the two. In other words, all of the evidence is that Joseph Smith wrote the endowment ceremony from the Masonic ritual. There were at least two ways he could have found the Masonic ritual. Number one, he could have read Captain Morgan's book entitled Freemasonry Exposed because it was published 18 years before he wrote the endowment ceremony. He was at least 21 when the Morgan Affair hit the newspapers of the area. The Morgan book was a word-for-word -word compilation of the rituals for the first three Masonic degrees. So, so Mr. Smith could have read, learned about the rituals from this book. It is important to remind you that his brother had already joined the Masons prior to the release of Captain Morgan's books, so his own brother was involved in the knowledge of the Morgan murder. Or secondly, he could have taken the endowment ceremony from his own exposure to the Masonic ritual as a third degree Mason only two months before he wrote the endowment ceremony. As I said, you can know that the two ceremonies are amazingly similar. So it is possible that Joseph Smith could have obtained the endowment ceremony from the Masons as early as 1826, some 18 years before he released it as a Mormon. In any event, on June the 27th, 1844, Joseph Smith was murdered by the Masons. By the way, notice that Joseph Smith was murdered on the 27th day of June, the sixth month of the year. By coincidence, if you add the 27 and the 6 together, you get another concealed Masonic 33. The Mormon Church tells the curious that an unruly mob shot Joseph Smith, but all of the evidence is that he was shot by the Masons themselves because he had revealed their initiation ceremony inside the temple endowment ceremony. I would like to provide you with another concealed indication that the Masons might have been involved in the shooting of the, Ma of the, uh, of the uh, uh, Joseph Smith. Witnesses to a shooting at the jail in Carthage, shown here, Cath Carthage, Missouri, said that as he was leaving the jail and wh while others were firing at him, he raised in arms, his arms in what the Masons call the grand hailing sign. Now this is a picture of the sign as found in a Masonic ritual book. If you raise your arms to a 90 degree angle like this and say, 
out loud, O Lord my God, is there no mercy for the widow's son? The man who is attempting to murder you, if he is a mason, upon hearing you say this, will not shoot you. That means that Joseph Smith knew that the men who were shooting at him and ultimately murdered him were members of the Masons. Joseph Smith was attempting to notify his fellow Masons that he was one of them and that they had taken an oath not to shoot one of their fellow Masons. But the Masons outside the jail shot him anyway. The only reason one Mason will shoot another is if he violates the oath that all Masons take. And the Mormons know that their prophet was giving the Masonic sign. Their book entitled History of the Church in volume 5, page 618 says this, Joseph Smith fell outward into the hands of his murderers, exclaiming, O Lord my God. Additional details of Mr. Smith's death were given out in, a number, in another Mormon book entitled Times and Seasons in volume 5, page 585. That book says, with uplifted hands, I want to go back, I uh, pushed the button a little bit prematurely, and with uplifted hands, they, apparently both Joseph Smith and his brother Hiram Smith, who was also murdered, gave the same sign. With uplifted hands, they gave such signs of distress as would have commanded the injured position and benevolence of savages or pagans. He went on to say they were both Masons in good standing. And Cecil McGavin, the Mormon author of a book entitled Mormonism and Masonry, wrote this on page 17. Joseph Smith, who knew that death was near, started to repeat the distress signal of the Masons, expecting thereby to gain the protection its members are pledged to give a brother in distress. That oath which Joseph Smith took when he became a Mason is this. I will never reveal any part or parts of the secret arts and mysteries of ancient Freemasonry. Those who take the Masonic oath acknowledge that they will be murdered should they break the oath. The oath continues. <clears throat> Binding myself under no less penalty than to have my throat cut across, my tongue torn out by the roots. Obviously a man shot to death because he has violated his oath is not the same as having his throat cut. But it is known that the Masons chose to kill Joseph Smith by shooting him because he had released their secrets. The Mormon takes a similar oath during the endowment ceremony. The Mormon takes this oath. I will never reveal the secrets of the endowment ceremony. Rather than do so, I would suffer my life to be taken. So the Mormon takes an oath, just like the Mason, that his life will be taken if he reveals the secrets of the ritual. Now this is a picture of the sign being given by a Mormon dressed for his role in the Mormon endowment ceremony. Notice the Masonic-like apron worn by the Mormon. At least one Mason provided a clue that Joseph Smith had broken his oath. A man named J.M. Moore, J.M. Orr of Utah, a Masonic Grandmaster, meaning that he was the president of a lodge in Utah, made this statement in 1878. We say to the priests of the Latter-day Saints, and the Latter-day Saints, of course, are the Mormons, you cannot enter our lodge rooms. You have heretofore sacrificed the sacred obligations of our beloved order. Stand aside, we want none of you. Such a wound as you gave, masonry, is not easily healed, and no Latter-day Saint is or can become a member of our order in this jurisdiction. I'm sorry, I didn't get that slide to come up. Let's read it again. Such a wound as you gave masonry is not easily healed, and no Latter-day Saint is or can become a member of our order in this jurisdiction. And certain early Mormons knew that Joseph Smith was killed by the Masons. Mormon elder Heber C. Kimball, a close personal friend of Joseph Smith, was also a Mason. He wrote this, Joseph and Hiram Smith were master Masons, yet they were massacred through the instrumentality of that fraternity. And at least one current Mormon agrees that there is a connection between the Mormons and the Masons. Dr. Reed Durham, director of the Mormon Institute of Religion at the University of Utah and president of the Mormon History of Society, History Association, forgive me, wrote this. The many parallels found between early Mormonism and the masonry of that day are substantial. There is absolutely no question in my mind that the Mormon ceremony, which came to be known as the endowment, had an immediate inspiration from masonry. 
Don't forget that Joseph Smith himself said that the Mormon endowment